Happy Friday! It's that Sunday School Girl of that SundaySchoolGirl.com. Welcome to the lesson for this Sunday, October 23rd. It is a fast and furious Friday around here. As a matter of fact, it's the morning and I'm already recording because the rest of the day is book solid. It was a fantastic weekend. Whoa, hold on just a minute. Let me ratchet this down just a bit. I am a second year law school student. They're trying to kill me. Somebody come and rescue me. Okay, so it's somewhere in the middle of that. There is a lot of work. There is a lot to remember. As a matter of fact, you know what? No, no shame in my game. This right here, I've gone back to an old school planner. Like, I don't care. There's paper involved now. Siri is no longer giving it to me. We're now back to just good old-fashioned writing it down. Everything that's due, when it's due, this is how we're living right here. This, this is life. This is my life. But it was a good week. And again, it is going to be a great weekend. This is actually homecoming at the University of Kansas. And so the Black Law Student Association is humbled today to host Texas District Judge, the Honorable Stephanie Mitchell. And so I'm excited about that. And then this evening, there are about 12 ladies in the greater Kansas City area who are joining me, that Sunday School Girl, just for an evening of friendship, fun, fellowship, and there will be no Sunday school books. There will be no planners. We're just going to let our hair down and enjoy the evening together. We're actually going to an escape room. So the event is called Escape with TSSG, and we'll have 60 minutes to solve clues in a room and get ourselves out uh, get the get the clues unlocked so that we can escape the room. So it's going to be fun. I hope that you and your family have something exciting planned. And yes, I hope that that includes Sunday school. If you are new around here, welcome. You have just joined the largest cyber community of Sunday school students on the World Wide Web. And I am, I'm honored. I'm thrilled that you are here. What an incredible community that continues to grow. I am so blessed that we are now consistently over 2,300 views every week people preparing for class and taking advantage of God's word. And I, again, thank you for choosing that Sunday School Girl. I ask that you will bookmark the page to your favorite so that you can get all of the additional resources and content that's there. And while you're here, hit the subscribe button. Come on and hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. I don't want you to miss any of the great content on this channel. Please share it with other students, share it with your teachers. If you are a teacher, share it with other teachers in your Sunday school, with your superintendents, with your directors of Christian education. We do study from the uniform Sunday school lesson. So without respect to denomination, this is a great place to study. What we're doing here is just making sure that we're all prepared. 15 minutes with me makes you dangerous. Just enough to study the lesson so that you can participate in class and you'll notice that I don't ever like impress you with my memory verse knowledge. What's impressive is when we can live this lesson out in our everyday life. So thank you. I'm glad that you're here. Before we hop into the lesson, just two things. You know that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And so TSSG has gone pink for the month of October. Hope that you've had a chance to see the website uh, go pink for this month and that you visited the Fight Gallery. If you know a Sunday school teacher, leader, Christian education leader who has um, survived breast cancer or is in the fight of her life, please send me a picture and just the city, the church and their role so that we can get them added to our fight gallery. You'll also see that this is the shirt special of the month, just $13 for the pink. So glad I'm a Sunday school teacher t-shirt. There are just a few of them left and no, I will not be ordering more. Um, they are going to go into retirement for just a bit. So if you're interested, you should grab it while it's available. The last thing I want you to know is actually there are two things. The last thing, last two things are if you are attending the Holy Convocation in St. Louis, Missouri in November, Superintendent Michael Payton and I invite you to join us for dinner on Friday, November the 11th. We'll be meeting up with our social media friends at the Lumiere Hotel. So look for an event on Facebook entitled That Saturday Night Sunday School Meetup. It's a combination of our names, that Sunday School Girl and the Saturday Night Sunday School line. If you're not friends with Superintendent Payton, you should find Illinois First Sunday School and like their page so that you get the notification. They do a great study on Saturday night that's like an hour long, 15 minutes with me, an hour with him. Like I promise you'll be like super prepared. The last thing I want to say is again, thank you. Uh, managing this life and managing 
uh, the website and the channel is a lot of work and there are days that I go I just can't I don't see how I'm gonna get the studying in. I may not get a video in and so again I genuinely thank you because your notes do come at just the right time but I also want to invite you if you're interested in being a support of this ministry of this channel I invite you to start giving a Sunday school offering here with us just three dollars I'm going to ask you to consider just three dollars there's a donate button on uh, our page I'll also try to put a link into the comments below and that will just help to continue the ministry help to uh, for the upkeep and the operations of what we do we do it by faith trusting God along the way so far he has not let us down but I'm going to ask you to consider just like we would if we were in a, in a uh, traditional class to consider a Sunday school offering. And I'm going to try to remember to invite you to do that each week. So let's get into the lesson. Our lesson this week is entitled The High Priest Forever. The Bible basis is Hebrews chapter 7 verses 1 through 3 and 19b through 28. The Bible truth. Jesus' priesthood will last forever because he lives forever. Our memory verse is verse 24. And the lesson name is that we will consider the relationship between Melchizedek, priest of the Most High God, with Jesus, the priest forever. Appreciate that people have someone who intercedes for them to God and respond to the realization that Jesus will always be our ultimate spiritual leader. We continue this week talking about the great high priest and we learned last week that Jesus is our great high priest and this week we pick up a concept that he is the high priest. How long? Forever. What is forever? Tomorrow I have friends who will be married and they are going to stand before God and their family and friends and make commitments to each other forever. Forever is something that has no end. It's eternity. It's not limited by time and it cannot be changed by any circumstance ever. Nothing can ever change. And so again, we continue this week to talk about Jesus as our high priest. In last week's lesson, and if you miss it, you should go back and check it out because there's a lot of context that totally bleeds over. In fact, I feel like some of it is a little bit repetitive because we'll see that Jesus is greater than any earthly priest. And this week we find out that his position, unlike earthly priests, is forever. Again, quick background, we're dealing with Jewish Christians who were going backwards. They were backpedaling. They were thinking about going back to their old ways and remembering the times of making sacrifices in the temple. As a matter of fact, sacrifices were still going on, but this writer is pushing them to mature in Jesus Christ. And all of those things that they knew, none of that was a good enough reason for them to go back to their old ways. Everything that they had known in their past, all of the service of the temple, the sacrifice, was only to point them to a time and someone who would be greater. It was to point them to a Messiah who would come and ultimately pay the penalty for their sin. And so the message of Hebrews is, don't turn back because you have something far greater. Who is that greater? Greater is Jesus. And in the last few weeks, we've studied that Jesus is greater than prophets. He's greater than angels. He's greater than Moses. He's greater than earthly priests. And so now we change from the person of Jesus Christ this week to looking at the work of Jesus Christ. Now, in the Old Testament, religion and priests go hand in hand because the priest was that person who was the go-between, the go-between sinful man and a holy God. We studied last week that Aaron was consecrated as the first priest, uh, the first high priest, I'm sorry, um, by God himself. And it was through Aaron's line that those selected to serve in the office of the high priest would be selected. Only eldest sons in the line of Aaron could serve as the high priest. And so Jesus being from the line of Judah, not from the tribe of Levi, like Levi is not a direct descendant of Aaron. And so we discussed last week how it's possible for him to be a priest. Again, check that lesson out if you need to. We saw last week that Jesus is the high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. And we talked about him very briefly in last week's lesson, but we'll talk about him because that is the focus of this week's lesson. Melchizedek or Melchizedek. And I told you last week, it's one of those long, hard King James names, but don't just call him Mel. Just pick pick one of those, those um, um, versions of his name, Melchizedek or Melchizedek. 
And we note that he is mentioned twice in the Old Testament in Genesis chapter 14, verses 18 through 20, and in Psalm 110, verse 4. Jesus has gone on our behalf and he has gone forever. And so he is a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Who was Melchizedek? We know from this week's lesson that he was a king and a priest, not a king and a politician, but a king and a priest. If you read verses one and two, you'll find out five things about him. His, his name meant that he was the king of righteousness. He was the king of Salem, uh, Salem meaning peace, uh, assumed to be the name of Jerusalem. He had no mother or father, so we don't know his uh, beginning. He resembled the son of God and we don't know his ending. So he is a priest forever. He was a priest and a king. And Jesus himself was the king of kings and the great high priest. And the lesson refers to the slaughter of kings, which happened in Genesis chapter 14. Now, this is one of those lessons where if you just read it, there are lots of historical references that may not make sense to you, but it helps to go back and kind of figure out what they, those were to help it make sense in light of what we're reading in this week's lesson. And so the battle of the kings that's mentioned is, again, back from Genesis chapter 14. It's actually the first war that was mentioned in the Bible, uh, the first account of specific military engagement. And there were a couple of nations against each other. There were four Mesopotamian kings of the east against a second alliance that was made up of five kings, which did include Sodom and Gomorrah. And in the end of this battle, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah were actually sacked. Everything and everyone that could be carried off was. And the four kings that conquered um, the five kings retained control of the trade, the trade route. And so Abraham goes to rescue his nephew Lot, who was taken over by the kings. He's uh, taken 318 men to go into Sodom to get Lot. And he goes up against the army of these four kings. Uh, he destroys these four kings and takes his nephew, uh, who took his nephew captive and frees his nephew. So on the way back, he's experiencing sort of this victory after the battle. And two men come out to meet. He's Abram at the time. He's not had the name change because that doesn't happen until chapter 15. So Abram at the time meets these two men on his journey back. And each one of them has an opportunity to offer and that's often the case after we've had success and victory. We often have a spiritual and moral choice that we have to make. And that was where he found himself. And one of those two men was the king of Sodom. And the other one was Melchizedek. And Melchizedek gives, he, Abram gives Melchizedek 10% of the spoils from the battle. Melchizedek blesses Abram. He does it by uh, offering bread and wine and you can take that sort of as a reference, bread and wine, the body and blood. And when Melchizedek met with Abram, he brought forth this blessing of bread and wine and he spoke a word of blessing over him. And we see that again in chapter 14, verses 19 and 20. And again, Abram gives him 10% of the spoil. And so Abram, even though he had a great name, submitted to someone who was greater, that being Melchizedek. He acknowledged that he is superior. And he tithes to him. Tithing is a form of worship. And in that moment, Abram understood that it was God who had just given him the victory. It was nothing of his own. If you read all of chapter 7, our lesson for today, you'll even see that those who were of Abram's loin, so Levi, who was not yet born, paid tithe to Melchizedek in establishing his priesthood forever over the Aaronic priesthood. So Melchizedek has no mother, no father. And why was that important? Because to the Jews, lineage was important. And we see that in scripture because we'll read text and we'll see this one begat, that one begat, that one. Or we'll see this person was the son of, the son of, the son of. We even note that when um, Luke wrote about the Messiah, he goes back to talk about this Messiah spoken of in the Old Testament, but he establishes it by running his lineage. He's of the line of King David, traces him back to Adam. And so Melchizedek is a priesthood that had no ending. Verses 18 and 19 continue this argument. Christ is greater after the order of Melchizedek. And Jesus basically ushered in this new era uh, because he sets aside old mindsets and the old ways of the priestly order. And the writer goes on to lay out that 
there was this new newness because if the old law was perfect, there wouldn't be a need for another to come. And it's not important that the line of priests would have come from Aaron. It's, it's not important. And he showed them that because he said, here you have this new order. And I just showed you that he's not of Aaron. He's of Melchizedek. So the former priesthood has been changed after the model of Melchizedek, and we now have Jesus. The law made nothing perfect, but it gave us a better hope. How, is, how did we get this better hope? Through the birth, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Those were the things that made the difference. And so here he lays out differences. We see the differences between Jesus and the Levitical priest. And the major difference is, that Levitical priests were limited. We even saw last week that when they made sacrifice, they had to sacrifice even for their own sins. But Jesus, a perfect sacrifice, was able to make the sacrifice for man once and for all. This promise came with an oath. And the Lord promised to uh, give us an enduring priesthood. And he swears this by an oath. Now, God didn't have to take an oath because we know that he's a God who cannot lie. And yet adding this oath emphasizes what he would establish to be. So Christ's sacrifice on the cross performs the duties of the priest forever. And God making the oath just gives us the additional power of his word. It underscores that argument that Jesus is superior in every way. He's our only savior. Now the priesthood of Aaron had to do with the law, but the law in itself was weak and it was useless because again it could not make anything perfect they had standards they had the law but all the law really did was highlight that you were a sinner and so we have this perfect sacrifice in jesus by so much jesus was made a surety of a better testament that means that god established a better covenant through jesus christ as his guarantee jesus continues forever our lesson says that wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. I used to hear the seasoned saints say from the guttermost Jesus saves. He can save from any situation, no matter what you've experienced or matter, no matter what you've been in. Jesus has the ability to save. And it is only through Jesus that we can be saved. Acts 4 and 2 tells us neither is there salvation in any other for there is no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. And Jesus himself in John 14, 6 says that I am the way, the truth, and the light, and no man comes to the Father but by me. So he's able to save from the uttermost. And not only does he save, but he ever lives to make intercession for us. He, as we know from studying Hebrews, is in position. He doesn't move out of position, sitting on the right hand of the Father. There is never a time in our lives that we are ever alone. He's always connected to us and he always has the ear of his father so we can always go to him. The old covenant provided a way for the Hebrew nation to commune with God, but the old covenant was not adequate to provide eternal change because the sacrifice of animals, bulls and goats was temporary. That's why they had to do it every year to take away their sins. There was never, there, there was, there's always going to be a need to deal with sin and we have that way. And now we, we don't have to do that anymore because we have the complete sacrifice. Jesus' death on the cross fulfilled that need. And he is our high priest. How long? Forever. Without regard of time, without regard of circumstance, he is our high priest forever. Here are my learnings from the week. The purpose that the writer of Hebrews is, is writing this is to strengthen the knowledge and the faith of of people in God. And so the same is happening for us. It is our hope that we are being strengthened in our knowledge about Christ and who he is. And we're using that as a time to be built up so that we know that we can't on our own fix the things that are not right in our lives, but we always have our high priest forever. We have a holy God who we have access to, and we don't need a man to get to God. We don't have to go through things and we don't have to go through systems. We don't have to be serving in a million places to have access to Jesus as our high priest. What was God's purpose in having Melchizedek appear on the scene? At critical points in Abram's life, God did certain things that reminded him of who he was and, and for what purpose he was accomplishing things. So here in this moment, 
he sent Melchizedek to keep Abram from taking his own success too seriously. And we need the same. We need those moments where we have to pause and realize that what we've accomplished, the victories that we are uh, realizing are because God has placed his blessing and his ability for us to succeed. Jesus is the only high priest that we will ever need. He's in position, seated right next to his father, and he has his ear on our behalf. We should never embrace anything or anyone else as our savior. So the message is and continues to be, don't turn back. You have something far greater, and that is Jesus. Jesus is simply greater. That's our lesson for this week. Again, I welcome you uh, to share any comments, any tidbits from the lesson. Please share the lesson with someone. I've got to run to class now, but I will see you in Sunday school. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye-bye, everybody.